My name's Heidi Jo Summers and I'm a painter from the UK. I'm best known probably for painting plein air. I paint lots of gardens, landscapes. I love domestic scenes, so I also paint lots of interiors and still lives and uh, figures as well. And I'm the Vice President of the Royal Institute of Oil Painters. I first came across rosemary brushes probably at Patchings Festival, so we may be like 20 years, more than 20 years ago, maybe 30. Yeah, and I've just got to know them a lot better probably in the last 10 years or so. They just make amazing brushes and they're more than that, they're just amazing people and they've become friends over the years. The set of brushes that I put together with Simi quite a long time ago now, a great set, uh, very economically priced and a super set. But of course, in the intervening years, I've just been buying more and more Rosemary's brushes, different types. And so the new set of brushes, I'm delighted because this really encompasses all of the brushes that I use currently. That I, could, I feel I could do anything with, the, with these 12 brushes. Although I've got dozens, if not hundreds, in the studio. I mean, this is like an ultimate set for me. I feel I can paint plein air with these, or I can paint still life with these, I can paint portraits with these. I just feel like I can do anything with these 12 brushes. Yeah, so one of the brushes that I've really started using quite a lot in recent years is the Angular Eclipse. The thing I love about these is it's a really nice crisp edge. So you can make a very, very thin line just with the edge of the brush. I love the ultimate bristle brushes. These are really good kind of workhorses. So in the early stages of a painting, I'm tending to block in. Filberts seem to me that you can do everything with a filbert shaped brush. Really, if I'm making a very, very thin line in a painting, I would tend to go for a wide flat rather than a filbert. But anything else, I love the, the shape of a brush mark that you get with a filbert. I like to have a couple of small sable brushes just for the fine little details, tiny highlights and tiny dark accents. Usually when I come to the end of a painting, I like my brush marks to look like it's been painted. I don't want it to look too blended and too polished. So I find that with a, a flat and a filbert like this, um, I can get that nice effect of the strong brush marks that still look like brush marks at the end of the painting. I think that an artist's brush marks are very much like their own personal handwriting and you don't have to worry so much about style um, because it just comes with time. The more and more you paint, you can't. it's almost like you can't help it. The way you write is different to the way anyone else writes and I think it's the same with brush marks as well. The way that you put the paint on is going to be very personal to you. But there are times when you want to soften an edge and for that I really love the super soft Mundy Mops. I don't dip this in paint ever, the, the Mundy Mop. I only just use it to, um, to soften the paint that I've already got on there. For the brushes that I carry around in a brush roll, this is an ideal bunch of brushes. There's nothing I can't do. Yeah, the bristle brushes I tend to use in the earlier stages when I'm getting a painting going. And then I move on to the synthetic brushes. So the Eclipse, the ivory brushes, um, they're the ones that I'm doing the bulk of the work with. I think Simi asked me the other day if I could only, you know, if I had to just choose one brush of the set, a number three or four uh, filbert or long flat. I could paint a whole painting with one of those, but then that, that would be boring. <laughs>